So this second version of the clean screen for the Game Gear has tons of new features and worthwhile updates. So let's just take a look at how to install this. Uh, the install's quite a bit simpler. There's no need to have any functional pins over here, which is what most people struggle with. Uh, and the ribbons are more accurate. So all I've gone ahead and done so far is removed L2, which is the only thing you need to remove, and remove the old backlight and fuses. So that's just been removed. And you take the clean screen screen brackets and screw them in with the board in place, and that's basically us ready to go. It's already had a recap, and at this stage, you just want to make sure your console boots to red light. And if it doesn't, just go on retro6.wiki and check out the article for booting to red light. But you can see we clearly get red light. So this is a potentially fully functioning console. We can go ahead and also connect a game in and an amp. And let's see if we can hear game audio. And then we're 99% confident this is a fully functional board we can use to uh, obviously install the clean screen into. So until you get game audio, then you've obviously got other issues uh, which would prevent the screen from working. So make sure you get game audio first. So with the tests out of the way, all we have to do to install it, it's really nice, quick and easy, is get the right ribbon kit. So this is a one chip because there's one chip here. Uh, we have two chip as well. And then if you have VA4 or 5, we will be adding support for that soon. And I just haven't had time to do it. And you've got the data pins here ready for it. So we've got the one chip ribbon. And we can hover it over roughly where it's going to be. Or we can even connect it in, whichever you prefer. So you can either connect this into the clean screen first. Push it in like that. Lock it down. And do the same for the other side. Just lift up the black bale. Push it in. And latch down. And now all we need to do is solder a few points in place. So we can see on the left side, 5 volts goes to the L2 inductor. Ground and start go over this capacitor. The backlight goes to these two. And the number 2 goes to here. So I'm going to start with the furthest point away. To make sure we have the most accuracy in the position. And just get it to where we feel it's in a good position. You can see this is bowing up a little bit. And let's just tack down the closest point as well, the 5 volts. So that's tacked in. Now I can go back and reflow more solder there. And I think with those two points in, then you have a nice flat ribbon that's already in the position it wants to be. So just take your time to effectively do a few points a few times until it sort of sits in place. The starting ground with this um, transistor being in the way, the start kind of sits up, which is fine. Just as long as you get the solder. It gives you a little bit of a bend on the ribbon there, but that's fine. It just sits over. It's the only way of kind of fitting that in neatly. And then finally, the backlight. Again, you want to pre-tin. This is probably the most awkward of any um, part of the install now. It's not hard, but it's about the most awkward part left. You want to pre-tin the wheel itself as well. And then you can see once you've pre-tinned both, it kind of flows in nice and easy. And that's literally all there is to that side of the ribbon. That's all in. And then we move over to the right side. Same principle. Let's pick, say, uh, the P-clock and solder this down. And then with that down, let's look at the positioning of C-Sync on the left. You can see C-Sync wants to be down and over a bit. So let's move that down and over a bit. And now it's over the hole nicely. Blob down the pad there. And just make sure when you've got solder like that and you think it's on, it's obviously not. Um, just heat up with solder, keep your tweezers on so it's actually on the board and you know it's now tapped in. The left pad goes to the bottom of this capacitor. Like so. And if we move down, we should see these all sit nice and accurately again. So you've got the 5 volt pin, the SMS pin, and then the T10. Same thing, just make sure you don't blob solder on the ASIC pins here. So keep your eye on this side, apply solder, and let it kind of flow in. Just make sure to check those pins after you've soldered, that you haven't shorted anything there. And similarly here, when you're doing this pin here, your iron might touch down here. So if you do, add a bit of flux, get some desolder wick, and remove the extra wick, uh, and remove the extra solder, and you should be good to go. The final ones are these resistors that all line up nice and neat. So same principle, just solder both sides of the resistor. 
<coughs> and just move the board into a position that works for you when you're soldering. So if we just do a quick visual inspection and a clean up as well. Let's get some IPA, clean off everywhere we've soldered. And if we just take a look, you can see they're fine. There's a bit of excess solder on that resistor, but nothing of a problem. It's not touching anything. SMS pin looks good. T10 looks good. There's no shorts on any of these pins. Peak lock, left and C single look good. And you'll notice now there's no need to go onto the back of these connectors. You do still need to make sure there are no shorts on these pins, however. So once you've taken the ribbon off, make sure there's no shorts between pins, otherwise you'll have issues, but there's no need to actually solder to them. So that's everything installed. And let's just do a quick few um, simple continuity tests on the pins we can see, because we have some exposed pins, so we might as well quickly test them. Uh, we've got pad two here. Should go to pin two under here, which I think if you lift up slightly, you can see. There you can get your testers in there. So you can go pad two to pad two. X continuity. Start just below it. Goes to start. We'll ignore the wheel underneath. We also have a test switch here. So if the uh, sorry, a test switch here. So if the wheel wasn't working, it's fine. But a quick test for the wheel is go over the two pins, go all the way down, and at the bottom end it should beep because of the resistance. Should get to, you know, less than 50 ohms. And then you can test five volts goes to 5 volts, which is there. Test ground goes to ground, which it does. This side, we can test left, goes to left. Data zero goes here. And what you will notice at the minute is we will update the silk screen on here to match everybody else's boards and the Game Gear schematic. So originally, I would say that zero, one, two, and 3 in order. And effectively they go dot zero one two and three so i've updated the ribbons now to say two zero three one but on our board here it's still the old labeling zero one two three so in essence that zero is that two here and that one is then that zero the next one that two is that three and that three is that one so effectively top to bottom left to right is how you think of it on this one and the same principle applies to the two chip where it says dat zero on here, it goes to dat two here. Again, this will get updated to then match finally the, the standards in the schematic. So we test that, we have continuity. Test dat two, we have continuity. Dat three, you can effectively just slide your meter underneath the ribbon gently and you can see the, the pad. Dat three is better coming from this way so that you don't took on this corner ribbon and rip it. You don't have to do this, this is just a quick test. And you can see DAT3 is connected. SMS is in the corner here, which you get a beep. C-Sync, we get a beep. P-Clock, we get a beep. So all the ribbons connected good. The quick check for the others is, go onto a ground pad and make sure nothing's grounded. The only thing that should be grounded is the actual ground. We go this side. And this kind of checks that the ribbon itself isn't shorting internally. And the only thing that should be ground is actual ground. So that's all good. So that's sort of a quick pre-check. You don't need to do that. You can just turn it on and see it working potentially. But it's good to uh, show you how to test if you do have issues as well. That's just a really quick way to test the ribbon. So with that on, there's nothing else to do but turn on. So before we connect the screen, let's just do a basic check. Because this board now has a load of features that will help you diagnose boot problems. If we now turn on with a clean juice, we can see... I'll just turn this light off. You can see now we have boot status LEDs. So you've got five volt okay in the middle, which means there's five volt is coming into here. And then the two regulators, 1.2 volt and three volt are okay as well. So you should have all three green lights. You then have a boot indicator, which means the clean screen code is running. So that's orange. If any of those aren't on there, we have an issue. If you don't get five volts, then you might be getting a dead short indicator. So we can simulate a dead short by and don't really test this this way, but go to ground and tap on 5 volt fused. And you can see it shorts out. And when we do that, the whole board's protected. And the 
dead short comes on and it disconnects power. As soon as the short's removed, it resets itself. So there's no way to kind of overcurrent this board and overheat it because it'll just cut off. So you should see three green lights. If you see no green there, then check your power's coming in. If these two are off, then potentially the clean screen's faulty. If the boot light's off, then potentially the clean screen's faulty. But you need to see all three lights and an orange light effect. That means this is pretty much going to work. So we can get the screen, install the screen, latch it down. And if we turn on now, uh, let's put a game in actually. Turn the contrast wheel obviously down so we can see something. So that's a working screen. Let's just peel the protective layer off. And let's just remove the game a moment. And a good way to test, say you turn on and there is a game or even you don't have a, potentially a working game read, you should still see this border. So you see this border around here? That means you're getting a valid C-Sync signal from the ASIC. So if you see a black border, you can be assured your game gear, almost assured, your game gear is working. Even without a game load now, so maybe you're stuck on the game not loading or you're not sure if the game's loading and the screen's bad, you can just hold the three test buttons or actually press two start and left and when you do that this is just simulating the buttons on the front so you don't need to put in a shell we press two start and left and hold for a few seconds we get the menu so if i just turn this around so it's a bit easier to see so let's just go over the menu options so if we hold all three and where are they there it will bring up the menu at the color modes we have basically the same as the game bit at the minute full saturation let's wait for it to go into game full saturation a more natural look so we can get into color mode you can see it goes full saturation natural look black and white and a dmg at the moment if you guys have any suggestions of new color modes let us know and we can add them pixel grid you've got your crt style horizontal your game gear style vertical or your pixel grid emulating a pixel grid i'm going to leave it on the original game gear vertical True motion is transparency support. So like this menu is transparent and you can see the bricks through the middle. Some games use tricks that the old LCD had retention of image and it would cause a transparent visual. On modern screens, all that ends up doing is flickering the graphic on and off really fast, which is annoying. The clean screen, however, supports that properly and has transparency support and it's on by default. And then VGA out, if you enable it, then the screen will just obviously fade because there's no clock anymore. If you're quick enough, you can press back. If not, just turn the console on and off. And the VGA is underneath the game connector here. So you can just connect that to a, a normal VGA D sub. The screen isn't integer scaled at the minute. It fills the screen like the Game Gear would. But for every pixel on the screen, it isn't perfectly integer scaled. But you can see here, you can barely see anything. There's no kind of shimmer or anything obvious. Uh, that's just because of the algorithm we now use to correctly scale images which is like an industry standard way to scale images to any size without noticeable kind of scaling artifacts or fixed lines. So mainly in Sonic 1, when you see the squares uh, or the lines in level 1, they'd really shimmer. And now on this, uh, they don't shimmer anywhere near as much. And that's really all there is to the new clean screen. We've improved the code, made it a bit more energy efficient. Uh, we've got some new debug um buttons on and leds to indicate it we have a dead short protection we even have if your backlight's not working say we just turn this all the way up and pretend the backlight wasn't working and we put a game in you can also disconnect them wires to prove it but you kind of can't see a screen pretend you couldn't see that little bit there we have a little switch you can just flick on that uses an onboard generator to make the backlight work so if you see a black screen flick your backlight test up and then flick it back down when you're done and go back to your wheel Try not to enable the wheel and the test switch because it will just over brighten the screen potentially over time. So it's just used as uh, either a test or if you are going to use it permanent, then um, make sure you disconnect the wheel. If you see color issues on screen, you have a little switch here between one and two chip. It doesn't necessarily mean one and two chip. It's just a variant in the C-Sync signal. So if you see red Sonic, try and flick it the other way. And if you've seen green Sonic again, try to flick it the other way. If you do see different colors like red or green, um, you can also try hand wiring the C Sync wire to the actual C Sync pad and cleaning the board with IPA, and it should fix your timing issues. And that's all the improvements to the new clean screen. 
So I'll just let you enjoy some Sonic gameplay now, and I'll catch you in the next.